Welcome to Vitalityville, where natural health is home. My name is Matthew James, and when I was four years old, I almost died. My throat closed over from eating contaminated food. This was my first anaphylactic reaction. I developed severe atopic dermatitis all over my body and suffered horribly for the next 30 years. Some days I could hardly walk, and others my face would stick to the pillow upon waking. It took me years of research into natural health, but I finally did what no medical doctors could do with all their credentials, hubris, prescriptions. I overcame my condition. Needless to say, this experience caused me to seriously question the validity of modern medical pharmacology, which can largely be traced back to the atrocities of Nazi experimentation in Germany and the rise of the Third Reich. In his book, Blitzed, author Norman Oller states boldly that the course of history was altered by the Nazis' love affair with hardcore drugs, including cocaine, heroin, morphine, and above all, methamphetamine or crystal meth. According to Oller, Hitler was an absolute junkie, and by the time he retreated to the last of his bunkers, his veins were ruined from addiction, and so were most of his commanders. In fact, as Oller argues, and leading British historian Ian Kershaw confirms, quote, the invasion of France was made possible through the use of drugs. Rommel and the rest of his tank commanders were high. Ironically, Hitler presented himself as an unassailable figure who was willing to work tirelessly on behalf of his country and who would permit no toxins, not even coffee, to enter his body. Consequently, in 1933, when the Nazis seized power, hardcore drugs or, quote, seductive poisons, as they were called, were immediately outlawed, and quickly drug users were deemed criminally insane. Many were executed by the state by lethal injection, Others were sent to concentration camps. Nazi propaganda associated drug use primarily with Jews, and the Nazi Office of Racial Purity claimed that the Jewish character was essentially drug dependent. At the same time, Hitler was heralded nationally as a figure of purity. He didn't drink, he practically ate only vegetables, and he wouldn't touch women reported one of his allies in 1930. Inspired by the successful use of the American amphetamine Benzedrine at the 1936 Olympic Games, a Berlin chemist by the name of Dr. Fritz Hochschild began working on his own wonder drug, and a year later he patented Pervitin. Pervitin quickly became a German sensation and as a confidence booster and performance enhancer was soon being used by everyone from secretaries to actors to train drivers and initially it could be purchased by anyone without a prescription. It even made its way into confectionery. Hildebrand chocolates are always a delight, went the tagline and German housewives were recommended to eat two or three, after which they would be able to get through their housework in no time at all. As a bonus, they would also lose weight, as pervitin functioned also to suppress the appetite. Shortly, soldiers were using the drug, and in Blitzed, Oler reproduces a letter sent home in 1939 by Henrique Boll, the future Nobel laureate, from the front line to his parents, in which he begs them for pervitin, for it was the only way to fight the great enemy, sleep. In order to protect his animated machines, also known as soldiers, Berlin's Dr. Otto Ranke the director of the Institute for General and Defense Physiology declared after conducting some tests 
that pervitin was excellent medicine for exhausted soldiers. Not only did it make sleep unnecessary, Ranke, who himself became addicted to the drug, observed at one point that he could work for 50 hours without feeling fatigued, but it also switched off inhibitions, making fighting easier. In 1940, as plans were made by the Nazis to invade France, a stimulant decree was sent out to army doctors recommending that all soldiers take one tablet per day, two at night, and another one or two tablets after two or three hours if necessary. 35 million tablets were manufactured and consumed by the German army and the Luftwaffe. According to Oler, crystal meth was the very reason France was invaded. When Hitler heard about the plan to invade through the mountains, he loved it, but his high command said, it's not possible, at night we have to rest, and we'd be stuck in the mountains. But the stimulant decree enabled the Nazi soldiers to stay awake for three days and three nights. The subsequent success of the invasion made crystal meth into an effective weapon, soon incorporated into German military strategy. For example, the German Navy developed a series of one-man U-boat, tiny submarines that would quietly make their way up the Thames estuary. But since they could only be used if the lone marines piloting them could stay awake for days at a time, Dr. Gerard Orzakowski, the head pharmacologist of the Naval Supreme Command, began working on a new super medication, a cocaine chewing gum which would be the hardest drug German soldiers had ever taken. The drug was tested at the Sachsenhausen concentration camp on a track used to trial new shoe soles for German factories. Prisoners were required to walk and walk until they dropped. Oler calls this historical discovery horrifying and recounts that many of the young marines, strapped in their metal boxes, unable to move at all, and cut off from the outside world, suffered psychotic episodes when the drugs took hold, and frequently got lost. Meanwhile, the pure, healthy, and vegetarian Hitler, also known as Patient A, began a series of experimental IV therapies for his failing health, including injecting live animal hormones at the behest of his personal doctor, Theodore Gilbert Morrell, and ultimately, a wonder drug called Eucadol, a designer opiate and close cousin of heroin, whose chief characteristic was its potential to induce a euphoric state. Today, this drug is known commonly as oxycodone. Before long, Hitler was receiving massive injections of Eucadol several times a day, and eventually combined highs, adding two daily doses of the high-grade cocaine. Incidentally, patient D was Benito Mussolini, who was also under the care of Dr. Morrell. When the Allies bombed the factories where Pervitin and Eucadol were being made, destroying them, supplies of the drug began to run out, and Hitler went into withdrawal, quote, bowed and drooling and stabbing at his skin with a pair of golden tweezers, unquote. Oler concludes by stating that meth kept the German people in the system without their having to think about it. And to summarize, the pharmacological industry not only made the atrocities of World War II possible, but also engendered them. And as more and more people realize the sordid and disturbed history of modern medicine, they look increasingly to natural health and wellness alternatives to preserve their own well-being. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. And for all of us here at Vitalityville, I'm Matthew James. Thank you for listening to the Vitality Bill podcast.